Hey guys, you ready for some wholesome content? So last year I needed to do a video because I was trying to stick to my schedule so I made like a year review looking back on the year and I was worried because I thought it'd probably be the most boring video on my channel but now it's the one I value the most. <laughs> I'm gonna link it at the end of this video and in the description because it's just so wholesome and it's really cool to see where I was a year ago and then now. So yeah, I'm making this a tr tradition on the channel now, guys, of me reacting to my own content for the year. So according to my video last year, I had less than 700 subscribers, and at, by the end of this year, I've hit 7,200 subscribers. So that's been quite a jump. So I think it's extra interesting to like go through my videos for the year and see how they've changed. So my first video for, well, technically it was still 2018, but it was right on that borderline. New Year's resolutions and I just think it's cool to look that oh this is my content at the beginning of the year. This channel is a bit different in that I like doing skits but I also have like a continuous storyline pretty much and I put easter eggs and little bits of information in videos so far in advance like you can go back to videos like over a year ago or more and you'll see things that were set up but never followed through for such a long time. So like, for example, this one, like Brianna just writing names on like her burn list or whatever, and one of them's Nick, and Nick was her ex-boyfriend, and, and that went up in the arc. I made a Jake Paul video, which was, I think, the first time it actually parodied a YouTuber directly, so, you know, starting the year, <laughs> getting into those parodies. That was sort of making fun of this whole mystery box um, scandal. I think it's interesting to watch this one, because I sort of, I don't think I fully grasped what makes a good parody, like, it was just very much based on, like, the video that he made, so it's like, you hadn't seen the video, you don't really get things that are in this video, so if I went and did it again, I'd do it a lot differently. Oh my god, I can't believe this stuff was this year! Um, <laughs> but this year, I decided to do something a bit different and make, um, a mini-series, and I was so excited to do it, and I really did it a different way, because I was like, how can I make a series that really, um, makes use of YouTube as a platform and what YouTube videos are. Because Brody and Brianna are sort of, it's sort of like they are YouTubers, so they are making videos, but they're also like in sitcom sketches and that too. So I made a story about them breaking up and getting back together. And the first video, I just made it like a, a breakup, a post, a post breakup makeup tutorial with Brianna. And I really enjoyed the reaction to that video because everyone was like, oh, what's going on? Did they break up? Because it was just like sort of Brianna making a video. Because I, it wasn't like a normal web series. It, I just started it. I didn't tell anybody. I have a whole video like talking about it, but I really enjoyed it because no one really knew what was going on. It was just sort of normal sketches and the end I compiled it all into like one series. And that was like so satisfying to have that body of work at the end of it. I don't know, it really opened up possibilities of things that I would like to do and I, it was that was one of my favourite things I did this year for sure. I definitely tried to do a lot more parodies, just go from the start of the year, Taylor Swift parody, <laughs> even though I could not sing the same way song. But that was just fun. That was that was such a intensive video to make. Jeez. If you want to see a really bad Taylor Swift parody, I recommend this one. It was honestly just an excuse to get Brody and Brianna to sing together. Now we get to the video that changed everything. It pretty much just changed the whole direction of my channel. The makeup community on YouTube. So this is just when I was just trying out lots of things, like just trying to parody anything popular. And what was popular right now? The James Charles drama. So I just used Brianna and a few of my other characters. I posted that on Twitter um, directly with and it got like, I don't know, two or three likes. And I tagged a drama alert and Keemstar saw it and shared it. I never thought ever someone like Keemstar would recognize me. I honestly have always been scared of that kind of community on YouTube because I'm self-aware that the content I make can be considered cringy, but it's just what I enjoy doing. So, I don't know, like I never meant to go down the drama path or the YouTuber parody path, but this is the video that hit and it's the video that got me success and it got me noticed by massive creators and it was something like I'd never experienced before and like I've said this before, but you can hate on Keemstar, but he definitely 
um, recognises small people. Um, I, I've seen him do it a few times where he finds someone who thinks is talented or deserves retweeting or something and he'll share it. I never see that really from big creators. Like no one, I guess no one's just on Twitter as much as Kim is. But yeah, I really appreciate it. So after that I did try to definitely stick to parodies a bit more. Uh, and I did like an Animal Crossing parody, which was just fun because it was just mucking around outside, which I don't do too often. Just a lot of um, experimenting this year, just finding what works and what makes me happy, like the compromise between what will be popular and what I'll also enjoy making. So that's really what I set my mind to achieving this year. Like if you watch my last year's review, I did mention that like I want to do more parodies, I want to branch out more from the sitcom type stuff that I do, because I just know that that was not getting me anywhere. So yeah, I think like if you go back to the videos from like the first half of this year, or even most of this year, you can just see I've tried so many different things. Like I did one with, uh, when a bird gets inside the house and that was very like, um, Josh Johnson inspired, I think. I finally introduced Brianna's mom, which is pretty much a parody of my mom. <laughs> no, it's not completely, it's just my mom inspired my mom if you're watching this. I really love this video, Mom Watching State of Origin, but it's it's very Australian, like no other country has state of origin, so no one knows what I'm talking about. But the one thing that I'm annoyed that I didn't get to do this year was introduce Brianna's whole family. Like I really hope to do that, maybe even next month. But it's just like, I need wigs. <laughs> so, yeah, it just wasn't in the budget this time around. And I did, I started a little series, sort of by accident, just like a three video series pretty much, of Jake, Paul, and Tanner. Because I parodied them when they got married. And that was fun, because I'm like, oh, I've already done a Jake Paul parody, I'll just do a Tanner one. So, that happened. Later on, I also did, um, them having a baby because they were pretending like they were going to have a baby and then them getting divorced so that was just a fun little mini series like I enjoyed that like making parodies of YouTube but then having those parodies interact with each other or resurface and that like I put Keemstar in the wedding one and stuff like that so I think that's something I would like to um, play a bit more with in the future like having the parodies of the people I make like interacting with each other is um, you know YouTube is sort of an in-universe thing I definitely tried to play with the uh, making things Australian. Um, I think that was very fair. Fairburn Films inspired, like doing Stranger Things in Australia. So yeah, I tried to make a sketch like Gus Johnson. I tried to make one like Fairburn Films. So I, mean, I think all this like experimenting and trying to like copy different styles and that has really helped me find my own style. So I made a Lion King parody from <laughs> the movie where every animal looks super realistic, so it was expressionless. Um, that one was just really fun because I got to dress up with a bunch of different animals and just that weird. Like I just really enjoyed that really weird YouTube style of video where it's like low budget costumes and bad green screen and all that. So I definitely want to make um, more parodies like that that are really fun. And of course I hopped on the Break It Into Area 51 trend which is just um, a good time because I went out like very busy in the afternoon along the footpath to film that and in this really weird get up and everyone was looking at me. Everyone. So that was um I think a really great personal growth experience. Now the video that I'd say was my biggest video of the year, the Twitch thought anthem. This one was the video that really made me think that I could make it as a YouTuber. Because Keemstar shared it again, so he did get the attention, but then it just like really took off on Twitter. It's not my most viewed video on YouTube anymore, but I still feel like it's like the biggest success so far because the attention I got from it was so overwhelming. I think it just struck a chord with people and everyone wanted to have their say about it. And so it appeared in like articles and people were reacting to it on live streams and People just making, putting it in their videos and like all these big YouTubers were seeing me for the first time and so it was just like so exciting <laughs> and I just made me think okay like the makeup community wasn't a one hit wonder um, like I made something else that people enjoy and I think that was just a turning point for me yeah that really I gave me a lot of self-confidence I think also I told you this video has a lot of parallels from my reaction last year last year what was my best video for the year um, Brianna being a hoe. What's my best video for this year? Brianna being a hoe. <laughs> Come on Brianna, make another hoe video for 2020 and be the best one yet. <laughs> 
So from there I really found that, you know, songs is what does well for me, even though I cannot sing. They're also just the most fun to make, so I made like a Susan Wojcicki rap, and that was just a fun one to film, like, I really liked um, going around finding graffiti and making like a, it look kind of like a rap video, that was just an interesting aesthetic to try and tackle. So I did a couple more parodies after the Twitch lot, but then like, I'd just been doing parodies for so long, and I'd been experimenting with so much for like most of the year, that I was just kind of sick of it, <laughs> and I just wanted to do something for me, so that's when I went and decided I was going to do another story arc. So, you know, like the last one, like the breakup, I was just going to start it, I wasn't going to tell anyone, so I do like that, you know, integrating it with the channel, so people are like, oh, what's going on? Is this another arc? This looks like a story. So this was, um, this one was about Brianna realizing that she doesn't really have any friends. It's, it's just me. <laughs> but. These videos were so much fun, like, like I think these are some of the best videos I've made, honestly. But I'm biased because I just love the story stuff and I love my characters. I feel like if you're new to the channel you don't really understand because you haven't seen many of the characters, but if you've been following for a long time, it's, it's not just like standalone sketches, it's kind of like, like everything follows each other, but the videos are also meant to be made so you can watch them independently of one another. If you see something in an old video and you're like, huh, that's kind of a coincidence, I wonder if that was meant to be there, or I wonder if there's subtext to this and that. There probably is, like, <laughs> these characters are way too deep for YouTube characters, I think. I, that's just what I like to do, you know. So yeah, in the middle of that arc, I went to VidCon. Um, so this is the third year that I've been to VidCon, and Overall, it was pretty boring. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend Australian VidCon unless you go to see friends. I was lucky enough that I actually met someone who I'm really good friends with now, which was Lachlan. And that was really funny because he saw me at VidCon, tweeted at me, like, I didn't know him prior, he just had seen my videos online, like the ones Keemstar shared or whatever, which is like the coolest thing. <laughs> like, oh my god, you know me as the Twitch thought? That's really cool, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, like, VidCon was worth it just to meet you, Lachlan. <laughs> How's that for a wholesome moment? So since I sort of jumped to VidCon there, I'm jumping back into the arc, because I was, that was in the middle of the arc. But, um, I really loved making the video, which was just meant to be, like, a taken on an iPhone from Brianna's high school. Like, Stacey had been filming every all the chaos going on in the bathroom. But I played every character, so... We actually got uh, our old iPhone out, and <laughs> we went and uh, booked a bathroom at the uni that I used to go to, and so we did all the costume changes and we had to like plan out all the shots like so we could cut them together and make it look just like a seamless video, and that turned out like way better than I expected, like I'm just so proud of that one. <laughs> and the finale of that series I think is uh, just one of my favourite videos of the year. I've done a lot of videos I love, but that one was just so big and it was like a two day shoot, um, just so many characters and it just wrapped up this cool arc so I definitely want to do another story arc this year. I already have an idea for one but uh, I'll see how I go because it's a bit different. Um, I am worried about doing arcs though because I feel like the, the more my audience grows, like I've pretty much doubled my audience in the last month. Like people don't know the characters or they don't understand that I do ongoing like mini web series or whatever so I worry that if I post it, it's not going to do well, or people are not going to get it, or they just don't like it, but I think I'm just, I just need to understand that if I want to do it, I should just do it, because that's why I make videos. I did a Shane Dawson song, and my next, like, big hit on Twitter was my Lily Singh song, so, like, yeah, Keemstar shared that one as well, so thank you, Daddy Keem. Yeah, that one was, I was terrified to make, and I did do another Halloween special this year, that is tradition on this channel. Every year I make a uh, Halloween special with Brody and Brianna. Um, so that's the third one going now. Those ones are always fun because they're a bigger video and it's just like a really corny, <laughs> lame <laughs> Halloween video and it's, it's just always fun. Oh, I have to talk about the time some hobo sent me his hair in the mail. Uh, someone I made really good friends with this year was Mickey Mitch. I'm going to use your new channel name. He just changed it from Shockmouth, but uh, that was just such a bizarre turn of events. It's pretty much I got him to shave his head because he told Keemstar he would do it if Keem unblocked him and then well, I shared it at Keem and then Keem unblocked him and so he shaved his head and then he sent me the hair and then I made a doll out of the hair and then I sent it back to him. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's been a great friendship so far. <laughs> right before the year ended, I managed to get my best video ever on my YouTube channel. 
Little Late with Lily Singh parody. That was literally another one I just did in half a day because I went out walking with Ben and I'm like, ah, oh, we need to put a video up today. What can we do? And I'm like, oh, maybe we should parody a Little Late with Lily Singh. So we did. I always have that fear that once I've made a video that does really well, I'm never going to get one that surpasses it. So to get one in this last month of the year that surpassed, you know, the Twitch Lot anthem and it, it was just nice and it just makes me think, you know, I can do this. Another thing that happened! This month I got paid for the first time! I got paid! <laughs> on YouTube, so... Oh my god, I did not think that would happen this year, so... It's like, it's not much, but it's like, oh my god, I got my first paycheck. Like, I actually got paid from YouTube. I, I feel legit now. <laughs> and I think the last video worth talking about this year was the I Got Offended song that I put on Twitter. Um, and that did relatively well there too, so... That one probably got me the most hate on Twitter of people getting offended by the I'm Offended song because they said I was offended by people getting offended and I'm just like, man, I just parody all kinds of shit. I, <laughs> I really don't care. I just like making funny videos. So yeah, that's my um, review or reaction to the year. I'm really like speechless <laughs> for how far I've come in a year. I'm really excited for 2020. I think like it could be a really good year for me and I don't really have any expectations or like specific goals per se. I don't know, this is the first time where I'm really not sure like where my channel could go. Like I feel like it could just do average or it could do really well, like I, I just don't know. So one thing I would love to do in 2020 is make merch. So hopefully I get to the point where I'm comfortable doing that and make some stuff that you guys like and want to buy. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who's been watching for years. <laughs> thanks to everyone who's new. And I hope you stick around and enjoy what's to come. And a special thanks to everyone I've met and befriended this year. Like, um, I think this has really been the year where I've made like really good friendships. So thanks guys. A little wholesome moments before I go back to bullying everyone. <laughs> Let's see what this year brings. <laughs> Bye.